As you exalt my name, I exalt yours. I lift you up on high. Those who honour me, I honour them. To those who give unto me, I give back unto them. For those who call upon my name, I call you out. I call you out into a new place. I have set a destiny for you. Walk that walk that I have set before you, says the Lord your God. Do not let the spirit of the world and the spirit of compromise overtake you, but you overtake those situations and know the authority and the power that I, the Lord thy God, has placed within you. You are a powerful people. Know your identity in me and remain in me. Do not deviate to the left or to the right, but keep your focus on me for the things that I want to do in your life, says the Lord, your God. Father, we do thank you that you are a great and a mighty God. And there's no God beside you. Father, we thank you for this day. This is the day that you have made. We will, we will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Father, I pray that each one of us here today, though small in number, may we be mighty in faith and may we be a church on fire for you. Amen. Father, that we can call down from heaven the fire and say, burn, burn, Holy Spirit, burn in me, set my heart on fire. Father, we need that fire again to be burning in the bosom of your people. Father God, that will be a testimony. Lord and God, and by that fire burning inside of us, it consumes all the dross around us. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the purity that you want to bring into your church and your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You really find the faith upon the earth. Now, when he is talking about the faith, he is talking about the faithful. Not how much faith you have got, but how faithful are you to God. I remember a few years ago, in the early days of my life when I first became a Christian, and uh, I used to follow the Geelong Football Club in, uh, when I lived in Victoria. And they purchased 18 of the best footballers in the whole of the nation. They had the best from West Australia, South Australia, and actually many from Tasmania. <laughs> and all of the rest of them, they were the absolute, and they had a team full of champions. And the team that was there, they just barely got in and made the four, and eventually somehow they got into the grand final. Well, the team of champions lost to a champion team. Every man in the other team was faithful. He was not an individual, he was a team player. And Jesus Christ is looking for the faithful ones that serve him. It is not how well you speak, not how good you may preach or the testimonies that you may give. It is how faithful are you to Jesus. Great is your faithfulness. And that's when he said, now when I return, imagine that, just over 2,000 years ago, he's standing there talking to his disciples, just like he's inside church today, and he says, church, I wonder when I come back, and you didn't know, and I don't know when he's coming back, but he said, but when I do, will I find faithfulness? I'm going to find people, I'm going to find churches, I'm going to find religions. I'm going to find a lot of isms. But will I find faithfulness? Faithfulness. 
faithfulness. God respects faithfulness above all things. And that's why when Paul wrote to Titus, he said, Titus, now we must earnestly contend. We must earnestly contend for the faith that was once given to the saints that make you faithful. Once, and it's never going to be given again, God gave you that on the day of your conversion. Faith with faithfulness. Will you find that in your life when he returns again? There's one thing I do know. You are here. And I suppose so long as you are here, that's all that matters with God. You are here. The person who was going to take communion is not here today. But you are here. You are here. And that's what makes the difference. You are here demonstrating your faithfulness to Jesus. I'm not saying they're unfaithful because those people that have been, or most of them away, are usually through health or, or infirmity or, or something there that's holding them back. And we're praying for them that they're going to receive the spirit of healing. We've prayed already for some of them. But you're here. Faithfulness. Why am I here? Not because I'm the pastor. No, no. I'm here because I love Jesus. Full stop. Full stop. And it's his love that keeps me going. I got to the place in my life many, many years ago where I said to the Lord, Lord, if I turn from you, where else can I go? Now, exactly what Peter said. So let's keep coming back and following Jesus. So the communion service today, the Bible says this about communion. Do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. As often. What's your interpretation of the word often? What is your interpretation? Some churches have it every week. Some churches, who's to hand on out, it's going to hand out the, who's on the handing out the emblems today? Anyone can do it anyway. It doesn't take a genius to do that. <laughs> now you are a genius. Praise God. But who? Who can? How, what power is there in often? Often. Do this as often as you can. So you notice when Jesus spoke that word, he knew there would be occasions where you can't. He said, so do it as often as you can. There are some times you can't do it. But do it as often you can. And the reason being, it is in remembrance of me. Not that you have forgotten Jesus already, but in often as you can in remembrance of me. So it is coming back to the graveside and saying in the depths of your heart by your outward statement, which is a slap in the face to the devil. This is acknowledging uh, Jesus Christ. I hold his body. I hold his blood. He's still alive. Devil, he's still alive and I've got this cup and this bread in my hand to tell you. And, I, and, the, and Jesus said, unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you have no life in you. So devil, I am telling you and I'm putting you on notice, you will see the life that is inside of me. What a beautiful statement it is to make. So what do we do? How often and how much value do you place over the communion service? I'm just filling in today for a person, but maybe you, you here today, is the one that could say the right words. Maybe today you might want to come forward and just say in your own terminology, thank you, Jesus.
for dying for me. Yes. Come on, it doesn't take scholars. You don't have to be a pastor. But Jesus Christ did say this. For you did not choose me, but I chose you and I ordained you. Are you chosen of God? Then you're being ordained to come forward. I don't want to beg you and implore you, but I want you to come out of love for your heart. And just say in this microphone before we take the cup and eat the bread, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I love you and I thank you for dying for me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for everything you do in protecting my family and myself. I love you more than life itself. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Here, I'll come up to you. Thank you. Father, I thank you for dying for me. I thank you, Father, for all you've done in my life. Father, I love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, thank you. Even though you knew me, you still died for me. You love me. Yes. I thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else? It's a great honour to be able to thank you. Let's now stand before the King of Kings. The King of Kings. Thank him at least. He is faithful. He is just. And he has forgiven us of all of our sins. Rod, would you ask God's blessing on the bread, please? Lord, we remember the song. Remember that this prayer is the remembrance of your body blood for us. We just give thanks. Remember that we proclaim your death and never ever stop in the acknowledgement of your gift of giving up your body for us. Yes, Lord. Amen. Let's eat all of the bread. And Peter, would you ask the Lord's blessing on the cup, please, brother? Lord, we just thank you that you died in our place. Lord, your blood that was shed, Father, in our place. Lord, how humbling it is and how great you are. Thank you for your shed blood. And Lord, thank you for your resurrection. Lord, thank you for new life. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. And when the cup was passed around, he said, Drink ye all of it in remembrance of me. Let's drink in remembrance of the mighty, mighty Saviour. 